Hello everybody, we're back with some more physics. Why are you running? Why are you running? So welcome back to our series of IGCSE physics. So today we will continue with chapter 1, making measurements. On the second subtopic of improving precisions in measurements. Okay, so the most basic measuring tool is a rule or better known as a ruler. So we all know what a ruler is. We know what a ruler does. It measures length. However, there are two more instruments that we are going to learn in this lesson, which is the vernier, vern, vernier, vernier, vern, 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 the vernier calipers and the micrometer screw gauge. So what is the difference between these instruments and the ruler? So for a start, a ruler only measures up to a centimeter length. So a smaller scale, the smaller scale of the ruler is 0 0.1 centimeter. It cannot go lower than that. But however, these two instruments can measure up to a millimeter length. So the readings will be more precise and the measurements you get will be more accurate. Okay, so what is a vernier caliper? A vernier caliper looks like this as shown as the diagram which consists of two scales which is number one the main scale and number two the vernier scale okay so to avoid any confusion here the main scale states the values in centimeters whereas the vernier scale states the values in millimeters i will teach you more about that in the coming slide but keep that in mind so how do we read the vernier calipers okay first of all we close the caliper so that the jaws touch slightly but firmly on the sides of object being measured. Okay, so this is the jaws. So this jaws was closing on this object and hold this object firmly but lightly. So then after that to read the main scale, we have to look at the zero on the vernier scale. Okay, as you can see, this is the zero on the vernier scale. So you look at the zero on the vernier scale and look immediately to the left. The first marking after the zero to the left is the reading of the vernier, is, is the reading of the main scale. Okay, so in this case, the reading on the main scale is 3.5 centimeters. So the main scale reading is equal to 3.5 centimeters. Okay, so now we have to look at the vernier scale. We have to get the fraction of a millimeter that the vernier scale will give. Alright, so now we look at the vernier scale and find the markings on the vernier scale which is exactly in line to the main scale marking. So what does this mean? Okay, as you can see, on the vernier scale, there are, there are markings here, right? And on the main scale, there are markings here. So we have to find the markings which are exactly aligned to each other. So in this case, you can see that the marking is, that is completely aligned is at 0 0.7, right over here. Alright, 0 0.7. So... That gives you the vernier scale reading. So the vernier scale reading gives you 0 0.7 millimeter. And again, to avoid any confusion, the main scale reading gives you value in centimeters, whereas the vernier scale reading gives the value in millimeters. Alright, so now to obtain the complete measurement, we have to add these two values, but we cannot because both are in different units. So we have to convert the main scale reading into millimeters. So to convert centimeters to millimeters, you have to multiply by 10. So 3.5 centimeters multiplied by 10, you will get 35 millimeters. All right. So now we add both of the scales together. I mean, both the values together, 3.5, sorry, 35 millimeters plus with 0.7. Uh, what's happening okay so 35 millimeters plus with 0 0.7 millimeters which will give you the reading of 35.7 millimeters okay so moving on to the next one which is the micrometer screw gauge so the micrometer screw gauge also have two different scales which is the main scale and the fractional scale so how do we read this equipment so first of all we need to turn the barrel under the jaws tightener on the, on the object Okay, since this is the object let's say this is the object so we have to turn the barrel here until the jaws tighten on the object so once it's tightened then we can take the reading so this is the main scale right and this is the fractional scale so first of all when we read the main scale we need to take the reading nearest to the 0 0.5 millimeters okay as you can see this is 0 0 0.5 millimeters 1.0 1.5 millimeters 2.0 
2.5 millimeters. So the nearest marking to this fractional scale line here is 2.5 millimeters. So that is our main scale reading. So our main scale reading will be 2.5 millimeters. All right. So next we have to determine the value on the fractional scale. So how do we do that? So as you can see, you have to find the marking that is exactly aligned to this main scale line here. All right. So in this case here is 15, 16 and 17. 17 is exactly aligned. So that gives you a fractional scale reading. So what our fractional scale reading is 0 0.17 millimeter. Okay, so now to get the length and to get the measurement using a micrometer screw gauge, we have to add both the values of the main scale and the fractional scale together, which is 2.5 plus with 0 0.17, you'll get 2.67 millimeters. Okay, note that in micrometer screw gauge, it's not the same with vernier calipers because vernier calipers main scale is in centimeters, whereas its vernier scale is in millimeters. But in micrometer screw gauge, both the scales are in millimeters, so it's much more easier to read the measurements. Okay, so next, moving on to measuring volume by displacement. Okay, so there are regular objects, there are irregular objects. So regular objects are, for example, like cubes. So to measure a volume of a cube is simple. You just have to have the length, the width, and the height. Once you have that, you can calculate the volume of the cube. But what happens if this object is irregular like this rock here? You cannot calculate the volume because it's irregular. It's, a, it's an irregular shape. It does not have a proper uh, length, width, height. You cannot, we cannot measure it. We cannot measure the volume by calculating it. So what we do, we use a technique called a displacement technique. So it is used to measure an irregular object shape. All right. So the, first of all, the cylinder is filled with water. And the initial volume is recorded so in this in this case this is the cylinder we fill the cylinder with water and we record the initial volume which is 150 centimeter cube for the purpose of this example let's just use 70 centimeter cube right so once we immerse the the rock inside the cylinder the volume will increase as you can see the total volume will increase so what we do next is we measure the final volume. So the final volume in this case is 180 centimeter cube. So how do we find the volume of the rock? So we just subtract subtract the final volume and the initial volume and ta-da! We get the volume of the rock. Okay, so 180 minus 150, you get 30. So this is the volume of the rock. So this technique is called the displacement technique okay so now for example one okay this example will show us and test you on how to read the vernier calipers so this is the vernier calipers as you can see this is the main scale and this is the vernier scale so what is step number one first we have to see where is the zero on the vernier scale so this is the zero on the vernier scale this is the zero on the vernier scale so we have to look we have to look to the left all right to the left of the zero which is here so then we can obtain the reading of the main scale which is 8.6 centimeters all right so now to determine the reading on the vernier scale you have to find the marking that is exactly aligned so in this case the one that's exactly aligned is right over here it's right over here all right so it's 0 0.2 millimeters or 0 0.02 centimeters you can choose either units you want to use it's totally up to you all right as long as you get the unit conversion right so how do we get the total measurement in length is we add both the main scale reading and the vernier scale reading we will get 8.62 centimeters or 86.2 millimeters all right so moving on to example two okay so this example is how to read a micrometer screw gauge so this example is slightly different from the one that I've shown earlier. Okay, let's just move on to it. The reading on the bottom is the measurement obtained and the reading at the top is the zero error. Find the actual measurement. Okay, what is zero error? Zero error is basically when the, measure, when the measuring tool is not giving you an accurate reading. So let's say for without object by right, this line here should write, lie on the zero. This line here should lie on the zero so by right, this line here should lie on the zero. 
then it will show an accurate reading because there's no object there to measure so how can it be when the the line goes up here to 0 0.01 millimeters here so what we have to do okay so by right this micrometer screw gauge should have its zero aligned to the main scale line because there's no object being measured so it's not possible for the for the main scale line to be aligned with 0 0.01 so therefore showing an error in the instrument or in the micrometer screw gauge so what we have to do to find the actual measurement so first we have to find the we have to, to get the reading of the micrometer screw gauge without the object to obtain the zero error so what we will get is 0 0.01 millimeter all right so positive 0 0.01 millimeter the reason why i put a positive because zero error can occur in both sides it can occur in the positive direction or in the negative direction okay so when it occurs when it occurs in the negative direction it means this line here will be somewhere here or somewhere here is below the zero all right so that's in the negative direction so this is in the positive direction okay it's important to note that because when you are dealing with zero error you need to take into account the the whether the sign is positive or negative all right so now to get the actual measurement we need to read this one with together with the object so when we read this the closest 0 0.5 millimeter on the main scale is here so it's 1.5 millimeter plus with the fraction scale which is 0 0.26 millimeter so what you will get is 1.76 millimeter all right so basically it's 1.5 plus with 0 0.26 you will get 1.76 millimeter okay so now to calculate the the actual measurement we have to subtract the zero error from the reading of the micrometer screw gauge with the object so what we do is you take 1.76 and minus 0 0.01 you get the actual measurement of 1.75 millimeters okay so moving on to example 3 the figure shows the volume of water before and after the pebble is submerged using the displacement method calculate the volume of the pebble okay so this is the initial volume and the final volume so the initial volume is 70 cm cube all right that's before the object is inside the cylinder so after the object is inside the cylinder the volume increases to around 95 centimeter cube so how do we calculate the volume of the pebble using the displacement method we just it's simple you just use the final volume subtract the initial volume and you get the volume of the pebble all right so the volume of the water is 70 centimeter cube volume of the pebble after it is submerged is 95 cm cube so the volume of the pebble is 95 minus 70 you get 25 centimeter cube all right everybody that is all for today's lesson please do hit the like and subscribe button and also the notification icon down there so that you always be notified when there's any new videos up so thank you for watching and peace out